Sometimes in life, you see things that you wish you had never seen. You can't unsee them. They haunt you, they stay with you. This could well be one of those things. Think carefully before you watch on. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we are gonna talk about this. Well, you can't see it at the moment, but it is the first dagger that I ever made. And it is frankly horrific. That's what the pixelation's about. But the other thing is, it's a bollock dagger. Now, you history people out there, you're gonna know what a bollock dagger is, that's fine. Some of you people out there are thinking I'm just making it up or I'm using rude words. No, bollock daggers really were a thing. Big medieval joke from about 1300 through to about 1550. And they really were daggers that looked like, to put it bluntly, a cock and balls. Brilliant joke 500 years ago. Still funny now, obviously. And they really absolutely did get the joke because this dagger here is a bollock dagger. And you can see what I mean here, where you've got a couple of balls and the handle coming up. Quite why we did that, no idea at all. I've got a couple of films on it with my theory, but they absolutely knew what they were doing with it. And so actually you'll see portraits where people are wearing these daggers at the front here, poking out between the, the sides of their coat. They knew what it was. You'd also wear them wear, wearing it on a belt or in a pouch, things like that. So bollock daggers really were a thing. And just look at this picture sequence. They were absolutely everywhere. But also the rest of this film is going to be about some really nasty work that I've done. It's not often you'll get a craftsperson who shows the world their nasty work. But before we go on, I'm going to show you some good work, just so that we know that I can do it. So here are a couple of Todd's Workshop bollock daggers. Nice small one here from about 1450, really suitable for wearing in a purse or, you know, a gentleman's dagger around about town. And then a three lobe uh, bollock dagger here a little bit later, French. I don't know, they like three balls for some reason. Todd's Workshop pieces. My other company, Todd Cutler, does racks of bollock daggers as well. Different periods, different kinds. So, you know, come down to the site, check them out, have a look. They're all lovely. But let's get on with the nasty bit. Before I show you this thing, I have to explain how it came to be. So 27 years ago, a friend of mine talked to a friend of his who had seen this really funny thing in a museum that he'd come across called a bollock dagger. Well, I didn't know about them. You know, I really didn't. And so I had a description from a man who hadn't seen it either, who had a description from somebody else who'd never seen them before. And it came to me like, uh, you know, like Chinese whispers or like broken telephone, whatever you want to call that game. And the result was this. How about that? What a thing. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? You can't unsee that. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, I don't even know what to say, I'm speechless. Hi, I've interrupted the film for another Todd Cutler related interesting fact. Late 15th century mid-status bollock dagger. Now they started life, bollock dagger started life as poor people's things, utility items, but they ended up being suitable for merchants and even kings. Anyway, you'll find this and loads of other Todd Cutler related pieces on ToddCutler.com. Back to the film. I'll give you a critique of the piece in a minute. The first thing, the elephant in the room, the bit that we cannot ignore, is it really is a penis with a blade sticking out the bottom. Now, the thing is, I could have, this is pre-internet, I could have gone down the library, got some books out, gone to a museum. I lived in London for goodness sake, you know? I really did, it wouldn't have been a problem but I'm quite impetuous about these things. And I heard about it on the Saturday or the Sunday at some reenactment. I came back on the Monday, workshop full of tools, doing special effects at the time. I could just make one there and then. So none of this research stuff, and don't need any of that. Don't need to go and look at any pictures. I know exactly what it is. It is as described to me, because I believe this guy, you know, uh, it is a penis with a blade sticking out the bottom. And that is what I made. I don't know, it is so grim. It is just so grim. That is why it looks that shape. I did no research at all. I got it through Chinese whispers, broken telephone, whatever you want to call it. And that is the result. 
Well, it's actually quite a well-made piece because, as I said, I was making, I was working in special effects at the time, so I was used to making one-off pieces, making things I hadn't made before, and having to make them well. So actually, we have a sheath here which is uh, made of oak, two parts of oak bonded along the seam line here, which you can barely see. I mean, it's a nice bit of work. The shape here uh, I made obviously as a turning and then squashed it down to fit. Quite nicely done, not really period correct. None of it's period correct. Some weird sort of uh, mouth to the scabbard here with these two little sort of frog studs on it. I don't know what I was doing there. And then in the very early days of knife making, it's something you can discover, is that this hilt is too heavy and it tips upside down. So I made it, I wasn't expecting, didn't anticipate that. So then what I had to do was basically move uh, the hanging loop way up here. So if your hanging loop's way up here, I needed some way to fix it. So that is why I ended up with this lovely uh, stud on the end there. I'm sure you piercing people out there know what that's called. I don't know what it is myself. And to make sure that that was stiff, because again, I'm preempting things, it actually has got a little bit of brass rod or something in it there. So, so sewn into this, which is, in case you're curious, finest kangaroo leather, I seem to remember, we have some brass rods sewn in. Now the blade, I didn't actually know anybody at the time who knew anything about blade making. And again, I knew I didn't have any blade steel and I just wanted to make a knife. So this is finest mild steel. And there we are. But the thing is, I suppose there is a, a story here, which is that I have moved from, well, from that to pieces like that. So a little bit more historically correct, a little bit finer, a little bit nicer, but that's the thing. We all start somewhere. And so I do actually get emails relatively often about how do I begin? How do I do things like you do or whatever it is? And there is a simple truth to it. You've got to start making and you've got to never stop. Just make and make and make. And I don't know how many bullet daggers I've made now since this one. I don't know, 200, 300, 400. And then also all the other knives as well that have gone with it. So that's how you become better at what you do. You just got to do it. There is no shortcut. There is no other way. Well, thank you very much for sitting through what was probably a very traumatic experience because, like I said at the beginning, you can't unsee that. But thank you very much. And I promise you, I will never, ever make a film on something that repellent again. But just to make sure, turn your bell notifications on, subscribe to the channel, come to the websites, check out what we do, help us survive. But anyway, see you again soon. Cheers.